Also, sorry if I look like super hot. Um, we don't have air conditioning and if I turn the fan on, it's gonna be super loud and ruin the video, so I'm just gonna sweat through it. <laughs> so I've got a short little introduction before we jump in. This week, we are working towards the final draft of your poetry essay. You've done a lot of the hard work developing your thesis, finding the traits, writing your commentary, and now it's time to kind of put it all together. By the time you're watching this video, you should have made revisions to your peer review organizer. That's the one you submitted to Eduflow with your thesis and your evidence and your commentary. So at this point, you pretty much have the meat of your essay. Imagine your essay is this burger. So what you currently have is like the patty, the cheese, all the condiments, but they're not really piled up and structured yet. They're kind of just in a blob and we need to make it look nice. We're not gonna worry about the buns yet. Those go on last. That is our introduction and conclusion. And we're gonna worry about that in the next couple slides. So I recommend following along with this video as you format your document, having it maybe in a separate tab or even on a separate device. Stop or pause as you need to, to make sure you're getting all the steps. To be honest, it's not super hard. I just wanna make sure you have a clear idea of how this is going to become your paragraphs and make sure you know what to do when it comes to formatting and copying and pasting. Truthfully, this is the kind of thing I would typically like model with you. I would be going over on the Aquas board, but we don't have an Aquas board. You have a computer screen, so we're gonna have to make it work. So the first thing you need to do when you get to this slide is make sure you have your peer review organizer in a separate tab. So I have mine over here. You've seen this before, my peer review organizer. It looks just like yours. I've got everything I need in here. I've made changes based on peer review. And so we are now ready to turn this into this. You'll notice that it's just a thesis statement up here, the first body paragraph and the second body paragraph. The body paragraphs are what we need to do first because you can't introduce or conclude without knowing what you're introducing or concluding from. So by the end of the week, your draft will look like this. It will be fully completed with a title with four paragraphs. I'm assuming about two pages, give or take. I guess mine's more like one and a half, but it's all good. I'm going to show you how to do this directly in the peer review organizer, but if you don't like that, you could copy and paste instead of into the top of the document, like I'm going to do into a new document. So I actually have kind of the before and after I wanna show you before we get started. So here is my peer review organizer. This is what we're going to start with. And this is what you're going to end the video with. So it's not quite a full essay yet, but it looks very close. Not worrying about the introduction and conclusion until the next two tasks. But by the end of the week, you will have a complete essay with four paragraphs, a title, it's it's gonna be beautiful. All right, so let's jump in. The first thing you're going to do is copy and paste your thesis to the top of the page. So I'm simply going to put my cursor up at the top, give a couple spaces, and paste. The next thing I'm going to do is write anxious because that's my first trait. The next thing I'm going to do is copy and paste my first piece of evidence for my word anxious. I'm going to just do it right underneath. Lastly, I'm going to do the same thing for my explanation of evidence. So it's going to look something like that. You're going to repeat the process for your second piece of evidence and your second explanation. And then you simply repeat the process for your second trait, leaving a space so you remember that's going to be a new paragraph. So I type adoring. So I just set that up so you don't have to sort of watch me slowly copy and paste, but you can see now that my document has sort of these bones of my body paragraph, my trait, my evidence, explanation, evidence, explanation, and then it repeats at the bottom. Now we need to delete all this extra stuff. An easy way to do it is to right click and then simply delete table. Right click, delete table. Delete the checklist, we don't need that anymore. And then you need to double click in this top area so you can edit the header. 
just select the whole thing, just delete it on out. This is also a time when you're copying and pasting to continue to make revisions. As you write, you should always be thinking about the end goal and how you can meet that end goal. So you're gonna notice right away when we jump into my body paragraph sample, one of the first things I did was switch the order of the traits. I looked at my evidence for adoring and it was from the first half of the poem and anxious was mostly from the second half of the poem. So I wanted my paragraph structure to follow that. So you can decide the order you want your traits to be in and you can change it at this stage if you feel like you need to. What you have to do now is probably one of the harder parts of what you have to do this week. So the next thing you need to do is add in a topic sentence for each paragraph. So let's go to my finished product. So let's actually look first at my topic sentence for adoring. I simply said, in the first half of the poem, Sappho develops the speaker as adoring as they observe the one they love talking with a man. So I clearly have my trait adoring and I know this because the speaker observes the person they love talking with someone else. My next topic sentence also contains a little bit of a transition here. So the speaker's adoring attitude shifts to a more anxious attitude as they continue to observe the beloved from afar. So this is a great way of transitioning in a really smooth way. So saying the speaker's attitude started as blank, but is now shifted to this, or while the speaker's attitude is this, it also displays elements of this. So you can copy that sentence structure. I don't really care. The reason I give you examples is so you can take it and tweak it and make it work for you. So you will type your topic sentence here. Next thing you need to add in is an introduction for your pieces of evidence. I integrated it in the speaker comments on the subject, sweet speaking and lovely laughing. So you'd simply type your introduction for your evidence just before it, right? Sweet speaking and lovely laughing. Of course, we need a period after the parenthetical citation. So I've added that in there. So what you're doing at this stage is adding in topic sentences and evidence introductions. Once you have all of that, you are ready to make it look like paragraphs. So I paused the video to do a little bit of formatting. So what you're going to see now is my outline. I've added bullet points just because it helped me feel a little bit more organized. I've got each sentence or sort of section with its own bullet point. I've added a topic sentence and evidence introduction. What I'm going to do now is simply delete the spaces, delete the bullet points, and do some formatting. So let's start with my first topic sentence. Delete. Make sure you tab that over. Deleting the spaces. And there's a paragraph. So you'll repeat the process for your two paragraphs. Remember to double check all your citations at this stage if you haven't already. What you have now is a document with a thesis statement and two paragraphs. You need to now delete any extra spaces and select all. Control A is an easy way to do that. We need to change our font to Times New Roman. Make sure it's size 12 and double spaced. You should also check the margins. So you can see how I'm doing that. You go to file and then to page setup. So my margins I often have set default at 0.8 because I like that for my personal things. But for MLA, you need to make sure that it looks like this, that everything has one. It's going to get a little smaller. And the final thing I want you to do for this body paragraph document is format your heading. So you will type your name. Sorry, my caps lock is on. Vaslin Spiorski, the class, literature nine, your teacher. I'm going to pretend Mrs. Arter is my teacher. And then the date in this format. And I want you to put the due date. So you simply need to copy it exactly as it's formatted on mine. So it is going to be due Friday, which is June 5th. You're going to do 05 space June 2020. And there you go. You're ready for the next step.
So if you have any questions about how to do this, go back through the video again. I mean, you guys know what paragraphs look like. You know what body paragraphs are. I'm really just kind of holding your hand through this because I feel like it's been a while since we've done this together and I'm not there to help you sort of troubleshoot as you do it. At the end of the day, you're writing about literature. We've been doing this all year. I know you can do it. You're all getting so good at it. And by the end of this week, you will have a draft submitted to Google Classroom. That is the only thing I'm collecting from you. Remember that office hours are now by appointment only. I typically didn't have anyone come and it felt kind of stressful just sitting, staring at my computer for a couple hours. So if you want to meet with me, make an appointment ahead of time so that I don't plan to do anything else during that time. I'm available during the time slots on the flyer, but if no one schedules an appointment, then I won't be online. So you need to communicate ahead of time. All right, you guys. Baby Yoda, baby, baby. I got some help in my video today. It's working on the editing, huh? A student of error who can only prevail Cause learning is trying and trying is hard When it feels like falling's gonna tear you apart But now I'm ready to win